We're here now with Susan Stone, CEO of Ubiquitous Energy. We're talking about solar panels and solar energy in America and beyond. Welcome to the show, Susan. Pleasure to have you here on Kitco. Thank you, it's You're my it. pleasure. One of the world's largest tech conferences, Collision 2022 in Toronto. You have a very cool piece of technology that we're gonna talk about. It's, uh, it's, your company makes more than just solar panels. It's the technology behind the solar panels that I'd like you to explain to our audience. Uh, patented technology, so we'll get into that. But first, let's talk about the solar industry in America. President Biden last uh, fall in September announced that he has an ambitious plan to take the solar industry to new heights. He wants uh, the current grid to be 50% or 45% to be exact, uh, solar power by 2050. Currently it's about 3%. He wants it to be 45% by 2050, which is not that far away. It's about 30 years off. How do we get there, Susan? That's a lot of panels. <laughs> I think the way we get there is in part deploying new technologies like ours. And I'll, I'll tell you just a little bit about what we do. Yeah. We were founded at MIT. Yeah. We make transparent solar. Yeah. So we harvest only the sunlight that your eyes can't see. And that allows us to make solar that is virtually invisible. So if we're trying to get to 40, 45, 50% renewable energy from solar, we have to think differently about where we deploy solar technology. And a way to do that is by not having to see it. So for us, our first products are for architectural glass because we see all of these beautiful glass buildings, all of our homes have windows. Why not use that surface to also harvest electricity while you have this beautiful window that you can see through and you know, keeps your building envelope nice and thermally efficient. So I think that's the way we get there is by deploying solar in completely new ways in places where you maybe didn't think it could go. This is a different way of thinking about it because we typically think about solar farms being set up in the Nevada desert or somewhere and then have the electricity shipped over through a grid or a power line. But you're talking about having homes generate electricity via solar panels directly, right? right. Is your vision to have homes completely off grid? I don't know about completely off grid. Our vision is really to help share the weight with the grid. And so for me, that means distributed energy everywhere you can. We can offset using just your windows. We can offset up to 30% of a building's energy use via our technology embedded in the windows. And for me, that's so exciting because our grid is not always reliable. I live in California where sometimes the grid goes down. Yeah. Maybe you don't need 100% electricity production. You don't need to offset all of your needs to have some really great benefits from producing renewable energy. You've got on-site generation. So if the grid goes down and you have battery storage, run your refrigerator, run the internet. That's a really important one for me. You know, choose those essential functions and to have resilience without necessarily having to offset 100% of your everyday electricity needs. And we can do that just with your windows. So you don't have to see it. You don't have to change anything that you do. Your house will look the same. These big, beautiful skyscrapers will look the same. We've just accessed a surface that was passive before and we've turned it into a solar asset. Right. It does raise, and I'll get to your product in just a minute, but it does raise a bigger question as to why we need solar pa power in America to grow. What's wrong with our current system? We have only, uh, as I mentioned, I think, 3% of our total grid is uh, generated through solar power. Uh, why not develop nuclear more or wind power or continue with fossil fuels? What is special about solar, Susan? Well, I think we should do all of those things for renewable energy. Fossil okay. fuels, let's move away from. Okay. But I think the portfolio approach is absolutely necessary here. Right. Not every renewable energy generation system is gonna be appropriate for every climate, for right. every system. Uh, there's some really exciting things happening in geothermal, in hydro, in wind, in nuclear, just like you mentioned. So there are all kinds of alternatives and we need a portfolio approach here. Right. So solar is just a piece of the puzzle. One of the criticisms of renewable energy is that it's intermittent. Uh, you can't provide a base load. Have you considered how to solve this problem? Storage. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something that the industry is really working hard on and we've seen some amazing advances in storage and battery systems. Utility scale, residential scale, and, and even at the device level, storage helps us buffer 
especially for solar, those times when you're not generating electricity because it's night or you know a, a really cloudy, stormy day. So I think storage is really critical. It also turns some of these renewable energy generation platforms into backup power, which is also really exciting and necessary here as our grid gets more and more stressed. And you know, for, for people like me in California, when the grid goes down, it's really lovely to have some power stored from your solar panels. So let's talk about your product now. First of all, you live in California where there's a lot of sun. What have you been like New Haven or something? <laughs> What have they been like, you know? You picked a good one because I went to school in New Haven, so I know okay. that climate right. really yeah. well. Here's the thing. The sun is all around us. And yes, we have a ton of sunshine in California. We have a ton of sunshine in the Southwest. We do have sunshine all around the world. And when you put solar on vertical surfaces, like the sides of buildings, the sun just follows that building around throughout the day. It's at a relatively low angle during the winter. We can be harvesting then when maybe your horizontal rooftop panels wouldn't be harvesting. So it's it's not quite the same paradigm as those horizontal panels that need the sun beating down on them all the time. We're on that vertical surface and we're harvesting all the time. And in fact, we're gonna show this off in a minute, but we've got our product, a, a prototype right here. It's making power via the lighting here in this conference room or sure. area. So there's all kinds of production that can happen that is still financially feasible, that still adds to the renewable energy generation, that doesn't have to be in the Southwest just baking in the sun. Right, all right, let's talk about the product. So let's, let's show this. Now, your patent isn't the window pane, it's the technology behind, uh, behind the pane. So tell us, about, tell us about what you actually have a patent on. Yeah. So we actually have a, a pretty multi-layered patent strategy. Our foundational patent, where the invention really happened, is a patent from MIT, yeah. and that's for the selective harvesting of only the infrared, near-infrared, and UV spectrum. So okay. that means selectively letting all of that visible light pass through and only harvesting the photons that your eyes can't see. So that's our patent. And it's a very, a very thin layer of coating, right? That's right. So then uh, uh, beyond that patent, we have materials, proprietary materials that we've developed that accomplish that. Okay. We use organic semiconductors that we've engineered to be transparent. Right. So we have patents on those. We have patents on the way that we apply them to glass surfaces because that's very important. Right. We have patents on our product construction. So we really have a, a pretty multi-layered strategy, but that core is the concept of selective harvesting outside of the visible space. How does this technology differ from a traditional solar panel? It's that concept of instead of using silicon semiconductors, which harvest every single photon they can, that's why they look like deep, deep yeah. black or blue. Yeah. You see those dark colors. We ignore the visible spectrum. Right. So, and that's about a third of the power in the in the solar spectrum is visible. So we we do only access two thirds of the spectrum because we're not that deep dark color, but. We allow for generation on surfaces that you can see through. So uh, we see ourselves as a really nice complement to those solar panels because we can go on surfaces that they can't. Yeah, I was going to- wouldn't put this on your roof because why gonna... would you, right? Why not? Well, because I would put silicon on my roof. I would right. use this as a window. You don't need to see through your roof. And it's not as, if, you were telling me offline, it's not as efficient as a silicone panel. Right. Yeah, okay. because we don't, we cut out that one third of the spectrum that we're not using. So you do need more solar panels than in layman terms. You do need more solar panels yeah, to generate. more surface area. Yeah, you need exactly. more surface area. So this would be for like houses, not so much condos and stuff? Well, a lot of condos are in, you know, nice big buildings that, right. that look like commercial skyscrapers to us. Right. Uh, so it depends on the building. The nice thing is, because this window is going in anyway, yeah. we get this beautiful piggybacking effect in the buying decision and also in the pricing. It's a window. You're gonna replace your windows. The choice is, do I want one that also produces electricity right. versus adding an entire solar system where you're putting panels on the roof right. that already exist. What is it doing right now? Different. It's harvesting energy. How much, what, what do those numbers mean? That's a voltmeter, so okay. it, Four and a half volts, just ambient light here. Uh, is that enough to power my iPad? If I plug it in somewhere? 
<laughs> I'm guessing not, just because we're not That'll out in the pretty cool. Well, you could have like yeah, a like a portable sun. portable uh, charger. That's right. Uh, solar power charger. You can just power, charge your devices. That would be pretty cool. Well, you know, we're, we're kind of teasing about it, but that's a really good use case for some of our first residential products, which is now that you're generating electricity at your window, yeah. what would you do with it? If you store it at your window, we make it, we store it right there in the window frame. What would you do? Would you plug, you could, we could put USB-C so you could plug in your right. iPhone. Where we could power your blind. Where is the power stored? Well, in this case, this one doesn't have storage. You're just seeing it yeah, generate yeah, yeah. in real yeah. time. But for our residential windows that will have those features, it's just tucked away in the frame so you don't have to see it. All right, so uh, we, we, can, we can, let's set this down. I don't want to break it here. Um, presumably, this coding could be applied to any device, right? I mean, you could, in theory, put this in the back of my iPad, it can charge itself. Oh, even better. We can put it in the screen of your iPad yeah. or in the screen of your iPhone yeah. so that when you run out of battery right. and you have an emergency, you can put it in the sun for a few minutes and get a text out or call an Uber, something that, like that. Is that our next step, partnering with tech companies to create this? We hope so. We hope so. We got a lot of work to do in architectural glass and we're pretty focused, but there are just so many things you can do with this technology. If you don't have to see the solar, it can go in all kinds of different places. Uh, something that I would like to see, and I'm sure a lot of people would, is solar-powered cars. But instead of you know, instead of charging your electric vehicle through an outlet, you just have a solar-powered roof tile or something, or even have this technology on the window or maybe on the side of the car or a door, um, and the car would just charge itself. Are we there yet? I don't know if we're ever gonna be there. And the reason I say that is because EVs are power hogs. I mean, those are gigantic batteries yeah. in our EVs. And there's just not that much surface area. So even if you coated an entire vehicle with you know, very efficient silicon, it'd be really tough to have you know, much mileage range just from powering from the sun. But this is really about contributing and extending your battery life, extending your device's battery life. It's about being, a, each device can be a contributor to its own energy needs versus you know, trying to replace other sources. Okay, so there needs to be a technological innovation there that needs to happen. One thing I'm curious about, Susan, is why the, uh, the cost to produce electricity from solar power um, on a per kilowatt basis uh, has been steadily declining over the last 15 years to the point where it now is able to compete cost-wise with almost coal. Can you explain why? Well, it's really about uh, adoption and volume in manufacturing. So the, those traditional panels have been around for decades. Yeah. They're relatively commoditized and they're a very, very efficient manufacturing process. So that's just the evolution of a, a really mature product. And we'll get there too. I mean, we're, we're gonna be building our first manufacturing facility here uh, by the end of the year. Okay. We're gonna start and we'll be a, a relatively premium product. Not that big of a price increase, right. but my hope is that as we get into mass production and we're deployed around the world as well, that our costs come down just, just like traditional panels have. Okay. They've had so much volume and so, ma so many years to- and Can to you tell us panels. about, yeah, tell us about, um, uh, the different applications. I think we were touching on that earlier just a bit, but go into a bit more detail on just, it's not just solar panels. What else can we use this for? That's right. So you, you hit it earlier. Yeah. Our coating, our organic semiconductors, they don't care what we coat. They don't know what we coat. They don't right. care. So really the fundamental concept here is to allow for the underlying aesthetics of any product to shine through and still generate renewable energy. So the windows are so obvious because you want to be able to see through them. Yeah. What if you could wrap a car right. and see the paint job below yeah. it? And we talked about that. We talked about battery life. It's still yeah. just going to be mileage extension, but that's right. valuable. Mobile devices, wearable devices, we, but you don't have to charge anymore. Yeah. And again, they just it'll just look like your Apple Watch. Right. Greenhouses that can power themselves. There's some really interesting applications here when you start to think about where would you put this if you didn't, if all you had to do was coat your display of your iPad, that might be worth it to extend your battery life. Cool, yeah. Um, I'd like to see how this is being utilized in biotech as well. Probably a lot of exciting applications there in the future. Um, so we'll follow up on that. Can you tell us a little bit about the raw materials that are being used here? Yeah, absolutely. So 
part of what is magical about this solution and the way that we've engineered it is that end to end, our window products are windows. So our materials, everything except for our secret sauce that I'll talk about in a second, are exactly the same as what goes into a traditional window. The glass, there's a low emissivity coating that keeps that sunlight from coming into your building and heating it up. It's on every window. Yeah. Uh, it's a double pane insulated glass unit with argon gas in the between in the cavity for insulation. Those are very typical and no change to the existing product or process or material set. What we add is just a tiny bit of our organic semiconductors, the ones that happen to be transparent, and our, we apply them in a coating to the window that's only nanometers thick. So we actually have pretty low volume of our secret special materials. Uh, and we haven't yet had any challenges getting those synthesized and, and made by our contract manager. Supply chain issue hasn't disrupted you? Not quite yet. No, okay. not quite yet. So we've been, uh, we've been lucky so far. There's a whole issue of uh, securing precious metals and strategic metals here in the U.S. Um, uh, suppose China or Russia were to cut off supply of any of these, I know, I know it's a secret sauce, but any of these uh, strategic metals, lithium, cobalt, that they have a corner, that they have a monopoly on basically in terms of production, would that impact you at all? No, and here's the really beautiful thing. Because we use organic materials, they're carbon-based, they're very similar to the dyes that are used in your clothing. Okay. There's nothing, nothing mined, no rare earth minerals, right. nothing toxic, everything, you know, if you were to put this into the recycling furnace, the way that glass is typically recycled, yeah. our materials just burn off. Okay. And so we, we're insulated in that respect from, you know, kind of some of these, the toxic nasties that are hard to get, that are mined. Um, they're not in here. So someone watching this right now but, but might think, all right, Susan, that sounds cool. I'm sold. How much do I need to dish out? What's the damage on one of these things? It's not, what, it's not as bad as you think. Because of what I told you earlier, that we use all the same manufacturing process as a material set as traditional windows, we only add about 30% to the cost of the window. Okay. So that's easily absorbed by tax incentives, by the revenue stream from having that electricity generation. Really? Yes. Yeah, so the, more than a, the window panel. So. And so the, the payback periods for building owners can be really attractive, can be in the single digits. Okay, cool. Do you see costs rising along with inflation or not? They'll come up a little bit. Some of those raw material costs that are in every window uh, yeah. are increasing, and that's just going to flow through our industry. Uh, there's nothing we can do to avoid that, unfortunately. I want to just talk about your personal background before we wrap up. You were an investment banker. What are you, what are you doing selling windows now? <laughs> I know that's a very generic way of, uh, of summarizing your career, but that's basically what happened. You were J.P. Morgan M&A. And then you switch into the tech side. Tell us about your journey. Right. It's been a wild ride. Um, I was. I was J.P. Morgan M&A, focused in the technology, media, yeah. and telecom group. So I had a little tech background. And I left. The real story is I left investment banking because I knew I didn't want to be an investment banker anymore. Right. And so I moved to Alaska for the summer. Okay. And then I was ski patrolling at Park City, Park City, Utah. I was a professional ski patroller where I met my husband. And I started doing venture capital work for a big family office in Los Angeles that was investing in climate tech. And so, I, and this is uh, run by an entrepreneur in the telecom space who really taught me a lot about VC investing and building businesses. So we invested in ubiquitous energy in 2014 yeah. when we were still in the lab at MIT, our solar cells were like this big. Uh, and in 2019, the board asked me to come in and be CEO and work with the team on our go-to-market strategy. So here I am. Your story actually doesn't sound too, uh too strange to me. I have so I, I come from a finance background. I have many friends who did banking and then they quit because they didn't like it. They went on a spiritual journey to Alaska or Utah or South America somewhere to rediscover themselves and now they're doing something cool. So um, yeah, that, it that, works. Spiritual yeah, it journeys work. <laughs> thank you very much, Susan. Thank you. Best of luck with your company. Thanks so much. And thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lynn.